wife, you're, you aren't much count, or she isn't much count. Something is wrong. But they've got to keep on bearing with one another and do nothing but what God says. Let them remain what? Unmarried. We, the church, still recognize him as her husband and her as his wife. And she can't get married in this church, and neither can he, excuse me, because we don't recognize the divorce. Now we don't want division. We don't want those children, one on one side and one on the other. We want them both with their mother and what? Mother and what? So if the old man and the old women die and go to hell, we want the children to at least go to heaven. You must look beyond one thing. So at my first opportunity, I'm going up to investigate and find out the full details, and we will report it back to the elders and deacons in order that you will have an example and increase in knowledge. I haven't heard from Brother Miller. He hasn't given me the details. I only know. Your attention is invited to the cartoon drawn on the back of the last page. I only know that they are divorced. I know that. They told me that Brother Miller was down there to the court. Not a member of the church should have been there. Have nothing to do with it. If she wanted to go ahead with the lawyer, that would be her doings. Then it's on her. Never let anything that is being done out of line with the church influence you in any way. For you have no church unless you have government. You have no church unless you have what? Oneness. To get together and fuss, quarrel, fight, devour, we don't need that. You can find that down the corner in the liquor shop. But the book says that by this all men know you are my what? If you do what? Love one another. The world have nothing to do with your business, and you have nothing to do with what? The world's business. I want to bring to you the fact that this thousand acres of land here has been renovated and has been put into the condition for the purpose which God gave it to us. We are planning to fulfill that part of the word of God where the Lord says that Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands unto God. We people of color are now stretching forth our hands, and God's church has to have a hand in what God does. We have a hand in what God has said he will do, for we are the church of the last day. We don't say that nobody is right but us. However, the one thing we do say, if they are right, they have the same mind what? They have the same mind we have. We recognize every individual who has righteousness as its principle as our brother. We recognize no church, no organization, which comes together and deny what? The power of God is manifested above everything in one thing, and that is saving a man who has the freedom of his will from doing what he don't want to do. Mr. Wright. The father of this gentleman sitting on my left here loaned us the first $10,000 which was needed to save this land. This is the place This is the place where the first English settlers settled and decided to stay. They landed on this soil known as Archer's Hope, and they stayed here one day and moved on a little further because they found deeper water. But on the 20th of October, we are going to celebrate we're going to celebrate the landing of the first 20 Negroes who landed here in 1861. Now we have borrowed another 10,000 to fix this place up and this money must be paid back. We want you to know that this is precious soil. We're going to build little cottages down here so you can spend one or two weeks vacation. You'll have fishing, swimming, relaxing in the woods and meditating down there where there will not be anything to do what? File this land which who gave? Which God gave us. It's ours, and we are fixing it so it can never be sold, that your children's children will be able to enjoy it. Several days, the representative of the government came down to see us about 
purchasing this land down on the waterfront. They just wanted us to name our own price for this part down here on the waterfront. I talked nice to them, but I told them I would have to see the board. And you all are the board, of course. It's not for sale as a board. So I'll carry them the answer back that the board met. I will carry them the answer back that the board said that it is not for sale, is it, board? I will carry them the answer back that the board said that this is the only place that they have in Virginia with as much waterfront as we have here. Shallow water where your children can run out there and play in it, fish and bathe. We are between Rockefeller and the governor. We're the meat between two slices of bread. If they bite, they've got to bite us. Saints, we are what? We are wonderfully blessed here. So whenever we do anything down here, it is your duty to see to it that the members do what? It is your duty to see to it that the members come. I was very anxious that every one of you be here today, for you represent the founders and owners of this land. This is a meeting of authority. I have gotten your word that we don't want to sell. So I can honestly convey the message back to the government next week. They're waiting to hear from me. The government wants all of the waterfront. They don't want anyone to have any of the waterfront but the government. But theirs are greater than theirs. And as you go in the Hall of Fame, take a tallest flag of them all, and you will see the flag of the government, which owns this land. Christ, the leader of them all, each of you represent that government and you say it is not for sale. So, I'll take that message back and that will be settled. I will take that message, so I'll take that message back and that will be settled. That is one of the main reasons we are glad that you are here today. However, time will not permit us to go into any further detail just now. Today we are glad that you are here also to elaborate in the celebration of Miss Mishaw's birthday. She had invited everybody down to her house, so let us all get ready to go down and at least say happy birthday to the elect lady of the Church of God. Amen. Amen. We thank God truly for a minutes as he was closing out and telling them how just how blessed they were. And as he had said a few paragraphs back, that he knows that the reason why he is so blessed is because of his righteous living. Because of his righteous living. And he emphasized that, living a righteous life, a life that is well-pleasing in the eyesight of God. Don't worry about what man thinks, because man doesn't have a heaven or hell. The scripture says it. Fear not the one that can kill the body and then after that do nothing else but fear the one that can kill the body and then after that cast your soul into hell's fire and he started talking about the being sympathetic and um, having righteous judgment or having your righteous judgment skewed because of emotions that you may have had or showing favoritism and he did not want that to take place in the church of God and neither should we amen Say that they're my dealings. <laughs> 